Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is my guide to setting up a multiplayer server for you and your mates or even a small community yourself. Now I've been requested to do this video and share all of the community settings that I'm currently using and I've done this stuff for a while now. I've had quite a few different server hosts over the years but I've always used and rented a server to do this stuff for the communities and I'm currently using Server Blend. Now this isn't a sponsored video and this guide's gonna apply to any server host you use, or even if you're using a dedicated machine to do this, it's just going over the settings I use. But if you're looking for a server host, then I can recommend Server Blend. And if you use code JAMESCG at checkout, you'll get 10% off, and it also helps the channel out a little bit. But this guide sort of goes over all of the settings, whatever server host you're going to use, or even if you're just going to be setting it up on a dedicated machine. I'm going to be going over all of my community settings. We're going to go over the user and config interface and all of the user any files and the Steam Workshop mods that I've currently got installed. So here's the user interface for server blend and of course pretty much any of the server hosts that I've used in the past look pretty much similar to this but in any case whichever host you're on you need to go into your configuration files and of course for those of you who are more advanced users you go into the text editor to adjust things here and of course you can write custom lines of code in there and override certain settings but for the purposes of this guide we're going to use the configuration editor and it makes things a lot clearer and you can see what settings I'm currently using. So let's go over the game any files first and the first option we've got ticked is the allow flyer speed leveling equals true. This means we can now level flyers with speed and we don't need to use the classic flyers mod which has caused a couple of issues for myself on previous servers. Um, we've got the use corpse locator that just gives you that green beam of light when you die and so you can find your body a bit easier. We've doubled the spoil timer to two because wyvern milk on Ragnarok now lasts one hour in your inventory, four hours in a dino. We've also got a mod where you can stick it in the fridge. Uh, we've lowered the hair growth speed to 0 0.5 and the dino damage multiplier has been doubled to two and they're the first bunch of settings we've changed loot settings is both 2.0 for supply crate and fishing and that's plenty enough trust me you're looking at around 350 max on a shotgun with them recipes uh, custom recipe effectiveness we've got on times two for any of the players wanting to do a bit of cooking and experimenting with that it's well worthwhile on my server uh, it of course is a PvE server, so we've got that switched on to PvE. Structure settings here, we've got allow platform saddles on multi-floors, so this all relates to stuff we're building on dinos. Disable placement collision, this is the integration of what originally was SS, so we've got that ticked because we haven't got the S plus stuff on at the moment. We've limited the turret ranges. And let's just go over here. Now these are the important settings that you really need, especially if you're not using SS because there's no nanny mod. But these are the breeding settings and we found that with a wyvern you're looking at about two hours for it to hatch to fully grow and about 45 minutes to fully imprint in it. So the two big numbers there that you need to copy down are baby cuddle interval multiplier at 0 0.0150 and again the same for the baby cuddle speed multiplier and of course this is fairly casual you know on our server people have got jobs and, and that so we're making it a little bit more casual but this is still a tough challenge on our server make no mistake but them settings are pretty good for the breeding settings and it doesn't take it all day to breed a dino of course you can still use them if you are using the nanny mod but what with genesis 2 on the horizon and the incubator and the other creatures that are going to be coming into the game perhaps the nanny mod might actually not be needed so especially if you're going to be doing a genesis 2 server perhaps then breeding settings might be a thing you need so we find them well balanced uh, play all level stats we haven't changed any of that 
um, this all remains the same at default um, we've also got a load of custom harvest amounts throughout all of the map if you need to go through that okay on to the user settings and of course this is where you'd set your password I've got my server host name you just change that to whatever name you would want of course I have actually put in the mod IDs here but it's not necessary if you don't want to do it this way there is another menu that we'll go into at the end of this when we get into the mods this here is where you can also set a message of the day we've got override official difficulty on 5.00 this ensures that we get 150 dinos on our server uh, we've reset the auto save period to 30 minutes but as time goes on we may need to change that to every 15 but every 30 minutes we get a small lag spike when the server gets backed up but it's nothing too bad at the moment but of course as the server gets more stuff on it the saves get bigger so we might want to change that later on to 15 minutes but at the moment it's manageable of course it is a PVE server, so we got that set to PVE. Uh, disable weather fog. Now, it doesn't matter what host I've ever used or mod, we've never been able to disable the fog. So if anyone knows a custom command line, then comments down below anything we'd, we're willing to try to get rid of the fog. Uh, we've got allow third person and always notify a player when a player's left. So we've got that when somebody joins the server, so we know who's on and off. XP multiplier that doesn't need to be touched anymore I mean XP really does come at a fast rate and especially with some of the mods we've got um, taming speed we've got at 5.0 we think that's pretty reasonable harvest amount we've got up to times four as well they've got this option to do your item stack size as well and we're not using the item stack size because we've got a stack mod so if you're going to put a stack mod on you want to leave your stack size at one um, otherwise it conflicts with that mod so there's a slide here and you can go up quite high but in our case we're using a stack mod because that combines with weight as well and of course you can up your stacks but you need to make it translate into the weight as well um, Ragnarok server settings what else have we got here yeah max platform we changed that to 5 just to install you could put more structures on raft so we put that up to 5.0 the ragnarok server settings we have allowed unicorns but they only spawn once every 24 hours and of course they can die pretty quick but as far as i know only one person has found and tamed a unicorn on our ragnarok server so far so they are pretty rare but you can adjust that if you want we've got the enable volcano on as well show map player map location and crosshair that's enabled on our server um, structure settings all remain the same here and don't think we changed anything the uh, the max platform saddle limit we might have upped that to 3000 but again it's just messing about with anyone who wants to do platform structures um character settings remain the same dino settings that doesn't need to change um all of this multi-server transfer stuff even though there's a tick there that just relates to whether you've got a cluster and if you want dinos to be able to transfer them between them but yeah that doesn't really need touching unless you've got a cluster service and you're running multiple maps but for the use of this we don't need to go over that um We've got allow cave building for PVE and PVE flyer carry. And we've also disabled structure decay on our server. So people have got some time and they can also build out a thatch and whatnot. But they've got a month before they have to log back in. And of course, we all pretty much communicate and know where we are on the server. So we've got all them settings enabled. And there is actually no building in the crucial caves on Ragnarok. Anyone with an artifact. But here we go. Um, allow dino raid feeding that means anybody could tame the titanosaurus if they wanted um, you can also gamma up and down that ticked allow baby imprint anyone could imprint the baby so they can take over and you can have uh, tribe mates do it as well we've got floating damage text hit markers and always allow structure pickup this also gets rid of the use of the builders helmet one of the reasons we haven't got um, SS in here, we missed the Builder's Helmet mod, but with this on here, we don't need to have the Builder's Helmet mod. So again, that's one less mod that we needed to put in. 
We've got non-permanent diseases on as well. So that's the user settings covered and I'm going to go over all of the mods that we've got currently installed on my community server. And of course this is pretty subjective this one. Do bear in mind that the more mods you stick on your server the less stable it's going to be and perhaps some of the community members you may have might not have the best of machines so the more mods you stick on there the tougher it is for them to get onto your server. But of course the Steam Workshop is full of fantastic mods and I do get asked the question after completing it without mods what is the one mod that I missed most of all and if you ask me the most essential mod is a stack mod the one we're using is stack 1000 and minus 50% weight now of course you'll notice within the user settings that we did have the option to change stack sizes but of course that doesn't reduce the weight We've also got the Roleplay Storage. This is a great mod in combination with the Stack mod because, of course, some of the vanilla storage only has a few slots, or 75 slots, but this changes that. And it also has a fridge for your wife and milk that you can use. We are using the awesome Spyglass as well. I think you've got to have that on a community server. We've got the Auto Torch mod something that's just taken from the SS mod. We're also using Marnie mods. Now this just gives you the option to customize your character a little bit. And I've noticed that they do keep up to date with their mods on Marnie mods. We're using pipes and cables as well. This one's pretty useful for hiding your pipes and cables. As you can see, you get different size cables and pipes. So it helps hide things a lot better. And this is combined with the bore and watering kit. That is all the boring water kit is. It's just a pipe that goes into the ground and you can feed water from anywhere. So it's the only pipe in that mod. And uh, yeah, it just keeps your maps nice and tidy. So here's a link to all of the mods that we're currently using in a collection for the Steam Workshop that you can follow down below. And of course, there's also the link for Server Blend. If you need a server host, then use code JAMESCG at checkout for 10% off. And of course, it does help out the channel a little bit and the community server itself that I've got running. But of course, this guide applies to any of the server hosts that you're going to be running. So I hope you found that one useful. And until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya.